In this part, we will talk about the transport across plasma membrane. Plasma membrane structure we have already understood and we know that it is a selectively permeable or a semi-permeable membrane. There are two main modes through which transport takes place. The first is passive, so it is called passive transport. And the second one is active, that is with expenditure of energy, so we call it active transport. Now let us talk about what exactly happens in these two types of transport. First thing, when we use the word passive, that means it is without expenditure of energy. Without ATP or without spending energy. And here it is active, that means energy is essential. So it is ATP or energy dependent. So this is the basic difference. Now when there is no energy used, then the movement is going to be slow movement. So passive transport is slower as compared to active. Active is a faster process because here we are using energy to uh, move a particle from one place to another. The next point is, in case of uh, passive transport, the movement of substances takes place according to concentration gradient. So movement of substances is according to concentration gradient. That means it is going to move from higher to lower. So this is going to happen from higher to lower. Let us take an example, say in one area there are 100 molecules of a particular substance and in the other area there is nothing. So there is a gradient from higher concentration to low. So particles start moving here. This will continue till we get 50-50 molecules in both the areas. That means now there is no gradient, it has reached equilibrium. After equilibrium, there is no net movement. What is meant by net movement? Net movement means we would not see the change in this 50-50. Movement is going to take place. So if one particle moves from this area to this, one is going to come back. So the number is going to remain 50-50. Or we say that this is in equilibrium. So in case of passive transport, it is always going to be from higher concentration level to lower concentration level. In case of active, because we are spending energy to pump or push these molecules, it can go against the concentration gradient. So movement can be against concentration gradient. This means if there are 100 molecules here and other area has zero, if it was passive, it would have stopped at 50-50. But if these molecules are so important, then we cannot afford to lose these 50% or 50 molecules here. So it will move in this direction also. So here it is going to become 49, it will become 51. That means it is going from lower concentration to higher concentration. That is what we uh, use the term for. That is against the concentration gradient. That means 100% particles can be taken in. So here there is nothing. All 100 particles would be taken inside the cell. So in active, movement can be against the concentration gradient. That means it can be from lower to higher also. So this is lower to higher also. Whereas in case of passive, it is always going to be from higher concentration to lower concentration till this equilibrium stage is reached. After that, net movement is going to stop. The next difference between passive and active transport is, in case of passive transport, semi-permeable membrane 
may or may not be present. That means this movement can take place without the membrane also or in presence of membrane also. In case of active, the membrane, semi-permeable membrane is definitely present. And the reason is that the active transport is actually taking place with the help of certain special proteins. And these proteins are the part of the membrane and that is the membrane is essential here. The next difference is passive transport is not affected that much by low temperature, not affected by low temperature or absence of oxygen or certain metabolic uh, inhibitors like cyanide which we call the poisons also. Metabolic inhibitors like cyanide. That means passive transport does not get affected that much by all these things. If temperature is low, oxygen is not there, still this process is going to take place. Active transport does get affected by these conditions. So it gets affected by low temperature, absence of oxygen as well as in presence of this, uh, these kind of inhibitors like cyanide. So these are some basic differences between the passive transport and active uh, transport. Passive transport, when we uh, talk of these, there are three examples that we take of passive transport. One is osmosis. The second is diffusion. And third is facilitated diffusion. And when we are talking of active transport, the examples that we take of active transports are like sodium potassium pump we can also talk about other pumps and whenever we are using a pump word that means this is a protein which is working with expenditure of energy so there can be only sodium pump there can be only potassium pump it could be calcium pump all these are active transports and one more we also include endo and exocytosis as active transport so here endocytosis and exocytosis these are also types of active transport so in case of active transport there is atp required and they are these kind of transports are sensitive to certain conditions like low temperature, absence of oxygen or certain inhibitors. Passive transport, not energy dependent. It is a very slow process. It takes place only along the concentration gradient. And that is why we are not able to take complete or 100% particles in. In case of active, because we are spending energy, we are able to take 100% particles inside the cell. So, when we talk of examples, we would be discussing osmosis diffusion and facilitated diffusion under passive transport and these kind of pumps, endo and exocytosis in case of active transport. In our body, passive as well as active, both transports take place continuously. So, initial substances which are absorbed, that takes place passively but if something has to be taken 100% then energy is spent and the energy is spent in the form of ATP. So these are the differences between passive and active transport and now we would take up all various processes of passive transport one by one. So we will start with diffu uh, sorry, osmosis first then diffusion and then facilitated diffusion one by one. We'll try to see what exactly is the movement taking place, which particle is moving and how these processes play a very, very important 
role in our daily life or various processes of our life.